All right, let's do numbers nine and 10 on the vector sheet. So nine, a crazy dog runs uh, 200 meters north, so we'll call that A for lack of a better thing to call it, 200 meters north. And then B, it goes 400 meters at 60 degrees south of east. All right, find the resultant graphically. So let's do that process. I'll impose my compass rows onto my page here. Okay, west and east. Uh, I'll make my scale 200, 400. I don't want to make one meter, one centimeter equal to 100. That's going to be way too small. Um, uh, you know what would be nice? I'll do one centimeter is equal to, um, if I do 20, um, no, then that's way too big. If I do 40, that's nice, because then this is going to be 5, and that's going to be 10. That's nice. So 40 meters. So I know this thing is going to go north, and then uh, south of east from there, so north and south of east. So uh, I'll start here, and let me draw in my reference line. And now it's going to be really important to have a good reference line, because I know I'm going to have to measure some angles with respect to that. There we go. So. 200 meters north, so that's gonna be five centimeters north. Let me establish what my perpendicular is. Okay, great, so notice that line's up there and that line's up there. So now this edge is gonna be perpendicular um, to the reference line I drew in. And so there it is, five centimeters north, A. Okay, now here's weird. I have to do a 400 meter vector at 60 degrees south of east, but it's not 60 degrees from this, because this is not south of east. So what I need to do here is put in a reference line. Because anytime I have sort of vectors, I want to make sure I have some good reference lines there. Because I need to go southwards of the east line from here. So that's southwards from here, 60 degrees. So I'm going to mark off what 60 degrees looks like from here. That's this and it's gonna be a 10 centimeter long vector because of my scale. So let me put that in. 10 centimeters long. All right, boom, there. Okay, so B is 10 centimeters long, and then my resultant, which is gonna go from the beginning of the first vector to the end of the last, so from here through to here. And that's my vector r, and that means this is theta r, and while I'm labeling it, that is theta b. Okay, cool. And so now I'm going to do my measurement in order to find everything that I need to to find the uh, resultant graphically. So I'm looking there, and I see it's about 6.3 centimeters, so the magnitude of r is 6.3 centimeters. Uh, when I do that conversion by multiplying that by 40, so come over here, 6.3 times 40, and I get 252 uh, meters, perfect. Now I wanna measure my reference angle, which is the angle that R makes with the nearest horizontal, and that looks like it is 36 degrees, so theta R is 36 degrees, therefore my graphical answer, here's my answer to A, is uh, 252 meters at 36 degrees, and it is going indeed south of east. Box it, there you go. So now, uh, in thinking about finding my answer for what's here, find, well it says find the components of any non-axial vector. So B is a non-axial vector. Uh, when it says something like that, find the components of non-axial vectors, it's talking about the given vectors. So here, part B, let's find Bx and By. So Bx is taking the magnitude of B and multiplying it by the cosine of the angle since I'm given reference angles. So 400 meters cosine of 60 degrees, plug that in your calculator, 200 meters. Cosine, uh, rather By magnitude is B sine theta B. And so that's 400 meters sine of 60 degrees. So we'll throw that one in our calculators. I think I know it, but I want to confirm. Okay, and of course my my calculator is in radian mode because I got a weird sort of uh, 
I know it's in radiant mode because I got a negative number and I know it shouldn't be a negative number. Okay. So let's try that again. 400 cosine or sine 60. And voila, 346.4 meters. Okay, great. So I've got that. Then it says find the components of the resultant. We know we do that vis-a-vis -vis the table. So let's make our table x, y, a, b, and r, because I've only got the two given vectors and then the resultant. Uh, let's make some declarations. My answer goes south and east, so I will make south and east positive just because. You don't have to, but that's just what I'm going to do. So vector A does not go at all in the x direction, and vector A goes in the negative y direction. How much? All of it, negative 200 meters. Vector B, the x part of it, goes in the positive x direction, so positive 200, but it, and it goes in the positive y direction, positive 346.4, meaning the components of my resultant are 200 meters uh, east and... 146.4 meters, and that's going to be south, okay? And then the C part of this, I want to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So here's the magnitude of R. It's equal to the sum of the squares of the components. Okay. Ooh, that two got a little funky. It's equal to the square root of, and now I have 200 meters squared plus 146.4 meters quantity squared. I'm going to throw that in my calculator. There we go, 200 squared plus 146.4 squared equals square root of that. And there we go, 247.9 meters. Wow, that's pretty good uh, compared to my original or my graphical answer. And theta r, tangent inverse of ry over rx, okay? Because it's going to be here, that's the y part of it, that's the x part of it, opposite over adjacent tangent negative 1 of 146.4 meters over 200 meters. Tangent inverse, that's going to be less than 45 because I know tangent of 45 is 1. So that fraction is clearly less than 1. So uh, I just like to have an expectation for what my answer is before doing it. 36.2 degrees. That's pretty good compared to my 30. And so there's my answer. My um, uh, overall answer then is uh, 247.9 meters at 36.2 degrees, and this is indeed south of east. South of east, box it, and I'm golden. So there we go. So that's number nine. So let's look at number 10. 10, two forces are acting. Oh, it says three. Oops. Uh, the problem used to have three. I'm focusing this year on two. Um, so, sorry for that typo. Up of left, rather, than, so it's trying to do a slightly different coordinate system. Uh, F2 is 500 newtons uh, just to the right. Okay, cool. So draw a sketch, oh, a sketch. Ooh, that means I don't need to, I can throw my, uh, my, my calculator, my, not my calculator, my protractor away, I don't need them. Um, so let's just, you know, uh, up left and right, I don't need anything just in terms of a, uh, an axis yet. So draw them concurrently. Concurrently means from the same point. So I'm going to do two first because that's just easy. So that's F2. And F3, it's going to go 53 degrees up of left. So it's this way and at a decently steep angle. So there it is. Uh, notice I drew F1 larger than F2 because uh, its magnitude is larger. So just some sense of scale. So that's what it looks like concurrently. So that's A. And if I want to know what that looks like consecutively, right, that would be, uh, I might as well just do F2 first anyway, and then do F1, and then there's my resultant R. Okay? Um, probably, probably not a right triangle, uh, but we'll see. Oops. Right, but the important thing is uh, draw one, then draw the other. I mean, I'll, I'll draw it the opposite way too. If I, I could draw F1 and then F2, right? F1, F2, and then draw in a resultant like that. Okay, either way is fine. Now, 
Uh, here I am asked to find now some sort of mathematical answer. So C, I want to find the components of the non-axial vector. In this case, that's F1. So F1x, magnitude is F1, cosine theta 1, we'll call that. And so that's going to be 1,000 newtons cosine of 53 degrees. Uh, plug that in your calculator. I think uh, just like off the top of my head while I'm calculating that, I think that that's something like... Uh, just before I press the answer, it should be something like 798 or so. Oh no, 601.8. I was wrong. That's the I did the I did the sine of 53 in my head, not the cosine of 53. Excuse me. Okay. And then uh, f1y is going to be f1 times the sine of theta one, or a thousand newtons sine of 53. Uh, and let's we'll plug that in the calculator so you can see it. 1,000 times sine of 53, and there it is, the 798.6. Um, can't believe I flipped those two, so silly. Anyway, find the components of the resultant. Well, once again, I'm gonna need a table here. Oh, and I will need an axis. So let's create an axis here. Um, we'll say, if this is right, this is left, this is up, this is down. Um, I'll say up and left are positive, okay? So, uh, F1, F2, R, uh, and this is going to be my left-right left axis. This is going to be my up-down axis. If you wanted to rename those X and Y, you can. X, Y, that is helpful for your own mental sanity. And so here we go. Um, vector 1, up and left. I made both those positive, so I'm going to put in the positives there. The um, left part of that is 601.8 newtons. The right part of the uh, up part of that, excuse me, is... 798.6 newtons. F2 is just to the right, so that's going to be in the negative direction along this axis, so 500 newtons, and that's zero. So that gives us plus 101.8 newtons and plus 798.6 newtons. So notice that this is left and up. So it is not a right triangle. It does have some sort of weird angle to it. Uh, I don't want to squish, so I'm just going to go on to the next page then. So now I want to find uh, D, the or E, excuse me, those are the components, those are my answers to D. Um, find the magnitude and direction of the resultant, so let's find R, square root of the X component squared plus the Y component squared, and then I've got square root of 101.8 newtons quantity squared plus 798.6 newtons quantity squared. Let's throw that in our calculator. 101.8 squared plus 798.6 squared, boom, square root quantity, uh, 805.1 if we're being consistent then. And then let's do our arc tangent, theta r, tangent inverse, ry magnitude over rx magnitude, perfect, tangent negative 1 over 798.6 newtons over 101.8 newtons. Notice that's going to be a fraction larger than 1. So the this should give me an answer that is above 45, which makes sense based on the picture that we drew before. Okay, second tangent answer. Boom. 82.7 degrees, which makes a lot of sense based on the picture I had. Therefore, my resultant is 805.1 newtons at 82.7 degrees. And this was up of left given the coordinate system. And there you go. That's how you do 9 and 10.